Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In our previous lesson, we discussed the characters and the roles that each character play in the novel Arrow of God by Chinua Achebe. Today, we are going to be looking at the major themes in the novel. Please subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so that you get notified when the video on the literary devices used in the novel is uploaded. There are several themes in the novel and we are going to start our discussion with the theme of religion. Is there religion in the novel and is religion play any prominent role in the novel Arrow of God? The answer is yes. Religion is dominant in the novel Arrow of God and we have a lot of clash between the traditional uh, Igbo religion and the Christian uh, religion. In the novel, we see that uh, the Igbos were worshipping a god called Ulu and one of the central characters in the novel is Eze Ulu, who is the priest of the god Ulu, who oversees the the happenings in the community and at the same time gives spiritual counsel to the people of Umu, Umuairo community. And uh, I discussed with you earlier in our last video that uh, Umuairo is made up of uh, five villages. And we see in the novel that uh, Christianity is identified with the source of uh, a lot of British colonial power. So when the people of Umairo are faced with famine, after Ezeulu refused to name a day for the yam harvest, the people have to turn to Christian religion to sacrifice the yam to the god of the Christian people and then they will be able to eat the yam. And that was what led to the collapse of Ulu worship and then Christianity took over in the land of Umairo. And before Christianity took over, there are two major uh, gods, Ulu and uh, Idemili. So we have Eze Ulu and then we have Eze Idemili. Both Eze Idemili and Eze Ulu, who are the priests of the gods, are not friends. They are enmity. There were a lot of competition between them. And why Ulu is regarded as the highest god in Umairo, Eze Idemili also want to be noticed and be given a lot of recognition and respect, just as the priest of Ulu, Eze Ulu, is giving a such respect. So the clash between religion, Christianity, and uh, uh, traditional African religion was fierce in the novel, and through the use of colonial state power, Christianity took over. Because when Eze Ulu was in prison in Nokberi, uh, the people were also worried because several of the people we are even turning to Eze Demili for spiritual counsel. So religion is dominant in the novel and at the end of it, the worship of Ulu was almost uh, getting, uh, getting to an end because after the death of the son of Eze Ulu, there were a lot of uh, uh, confrontation and disappointment among the people. Why some of them were arguing that, okay, the death of uh, the son of Ezeulu was as a result of, of, uh, of the punishment that Ulu is giving to Ezeulu for refusing to name a day for the young festival. The child, Obika, the son of Ezeulu, dies in the novel. So, in fact, the death of Obika can even represent the death of Ulu. And also the arrest of Ezeulu by the colonial administration also represent the arrest of colonial culture by the British Christian religion. Okay? Now another one in the novel is that of tradition and custom. Before the advent of uh, colonial interruption, the Igbo society is governed by a lot of tradition and customs. And as portrayed in the novel, Arrow of God, there are several instances where the people, people adhere to their custom and tradition. One of it is the worship of 
the traditional god Ulu, and also the worship of the, the subordinate traditional god called Idemili. Both gods are worshipped in Umairo. And several things were done in the tradition of the people. So the deity Ulu provide the important purification rite as well as feast associated with the rhythm of agriculture. Because the rite and the feast like yam festival is done during the time of yam uh, harvest. So in our role of God, we see that these traditions are undermined by the coming of Christianity. The power of the British colonial office and most importantly by Ezoulu's refusal to be flexible and to follow the tradition to the core despite the begging of the people, the pleading from the people and men of title and the entire community of Umairo begging Ezeulu to eat the remaining three tubers of yam so that the yam festival can begin. But he refused. So he ensured he adhered to the tradition of eating one tuba of yam per month and that will take another three months and the people were so apprehensive that if their yam should be in the farm for the next three months it will get rot they have to harvest the yam so, so as a result of that some of them have to go to the christian god when the catechist mr good country um have suggested that the people can bring their yam and then the christian god will provide protection so when they bring their yam to the church and celebrate the yam festival the christian god will provide them protection so that they will not incur the anger of ulu and that was what led slowly to the worship of uh, christian god in uh, umairo community so the tradition started well, but towards the end of the novel, we'll see that the, the, the tradition is distorted by the refusal of Ezeulu to be flexible and to consider the pains and the worries of the people by refusing to eat the yams and set a day for yam festival. Another uh, major theme in the novel is that of competition. There are several competitions in the novel we see competition between Ezeulu's wives who were fighting for his attention. The first wife was almost gasping for attention because Ezeulu was giving much attention to the second wife and that, that caused a lot of competition and even rivalry between the children of Ezeulu. And then we have another competition between Ezeulu and Ezeidemili. I told you that Ulu is the highest god in the Umairo community. The other subordinate god is called Idemili. So Ezeulu is the priest of Ulu. Ezeidemili is the priest of Idemili. So both of them clash on several instances because the, the respect and honor being given to Ezeulu, the Ezeidemili also want such kind of respect. And even instigating people like uh, Mwaka, to, pro, to make the people, to, 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 to motivate the people to go against Ezeulu. Ezeidemili also was claiming that uh, his god, Edemili, is powerful. So all the respect should not be given to Ezeulu. Rather, there should be a considerable respect to him and honor to him also as Ezeidemili and also to Edemili the god. So because of that, there were a lot of commotion in the community. So there is always... There is another fight between Christian religion and traditional religion. Though this fight is still not so loud, but we see that Christianity was taking over the community of Umairo. And that is even one of the reasons why Ezeul even sent his son to go and learn the ways of the white man by going to the white man's school and at the same time going to the white man's church, worshipping in the Christian way. So that also creates a lot of uh, tension and competition. So there was also a competition between the people of Okweri, Okweri, Okweri village and uh, the uh, Umairo village. Umairo is made up of five villages. One of it is Okweri, one of it is Umairo. So because of the competition between Umairo and Okweri, there was war. The people of Umairo wanted to go to war with the village of Okweri 
which SMU did not support. So it was as a result of competition also. Competition for land, competition for other agricultural produce. Now another major theme in the novel is that of revenge. <clears throat> I can say the downfall of Ezeulu was premised on revenge. The downfall of Ezeulu was uh, precipitated by his desire to revenge and deal with the people of Umairo for not respecting him and respecting the god Ulu. So, as a result of his desire for revenge, he now ensured that he is going to punish the people by refusing to eat the yam until the next three months. And also there was a revenge between Okberi and Umairu village because when an emissary was sent to Okberi, he was killed. The person was killed. It was Miss a pig's mission, but the person did not return. So the people of Umairu have to warm up for a while to go to war with the people of Okberi. To revenge the death of that uh, of that a uh, mystery for peace, and at the same time to get the land back, even though many of them we are aware that the land does not originally belong to Umairo, it belongs to Okweri. And also Ezelu tried to revenge by ensuring that he refused to eat the yam and punish the people of Umairo for not respecting him and respecting Ulu. Another one is that Eze Demili also tried to re revenge when the son of Eze Ulu carried the python of Eze Demili, carried the python of Idemili, the god Idemili, and put it, put it in the box. So when Eze Demili sent the message to Eze Ulu to bring sacrifice, to bring uh, things to sacrifice to appease uh, Idemili, Eze Ulu refused. And that also was a, a grudge in the mind of Eze Demili. And what happened was that Eze Demili also planned to revenge that for, for the refusal of Eze Ulu to appease the god of Idemili by manipulating Waka to fight against Eze Ulu. And Waka also, because he's one of the leaders in the community, gathered some of the title holders and was talking about about Eze Ulu and Ulu. So that is another form of revenge. So another one in the novel is that of power. There were a lot of lust for power in the novel Arun of God. As the British administration rises to power, the men Numero discover that their power is diminishing. The power to make decisions for themselves, the power to determine uh, who to fight and who not to fight because the British administration even stopped them from fighting Okweri and gave the land back to Okweri. So the men of Myro discover that their power is limited when the British administration steps in and stops them from warring with Okweri. So Waka and Eze Demili accuses Eze Ulu of desiring power in order to max their own attempt to unseat him. Because Eze Demili and Waka also were planning to remove Eze Ulu. And, he, and also to proclaim that Ulu is a dead god. So that Idemili, we the people we talk to Idemili and worship Idemili. So Eze Ulu punishes the people of Umairo because they didn't accord him and the deity proper respect. So the power struggle between Eze Ulu and the people of Umairo Give the Christian catkiss, Mr. Good Country, the opportunity to win convert. So the novel concluded with Ezeulu's power receding as Christianity take over the stage and take over the community of Umairo. Another one is respect and reputation. In fact, is there respect in the novel at the beginning of a uh, role of God? Ezeulu was highly respected by many members of the community of Umairo. And it is part of Igbo culture as well. So, the colonial officials also value reputation so well. And that was why the colonial administration wanted to make Ezeulu the warrant chief. Even when he refused. 
Why? Because Ezolu was reputed to be a man of truth. He was the one who told, who told the, the, the British administration the truth about the fight between Okberi and Umairo. So he told the British colonial government that Umairo, his own village, is wrong. That the land belonged to Okberi. And that also made a lot of people in Umairo to disrespect Eze Ulu. For saying the truth. And it even made some people to also disrespect the god Ulu because of that. But what happened? At the end, we saw that the, the reputation paid off because the people rather respect the colonial administration of respect is even more than any other person in Umairo. Though they imprisoned him for about two months for refusing to accept the warrant chief position. And the people also not coming to rescue Ezebulu from the, from the prison of the colonial uh, administration in Okweri. Ezebulu was not seeing a kind of a grudge for them and promised to revenge also. Another one in the novel is that of duty. In the novel, both the British captain Winterbottom and the Ezeulu have inflated sense of duty, which might be why the two men like each other. Winterbottom believes it is his duty to maintain decorum, to keep a high moral standard, and also, Ezeulu also believed that he must do whatever the God Ulu requires. Believe that he must do whatever, anything whatsoever that Ulu wants him to do. Even if it does not go down well with the people of Umairo. And that was exactly what happened. Because the people of Umairo did not want Ulu to accept the postponement of Yam Festival. They want to look to fight for them, give them power to fight to Okberi people and kill them and take over the land. So, despite the dissatisfaction of the people of Umairo, Ezeulu did not care. He ensured what he is doing is right as long as Ulu did not punish him. But when his son Nobika died, can we say that it was Ulu that punished um, Ezeulu? Well, nobody can say because at the end of the novel, we can't really point out whether it was Ulu that killed Obika or Obika died as a result of heart attack. Though many of them believe that it was Ulu, but we can't really say. So, in our next video, we are going to be discussing the literary devices in the novel. Please remember to subscribe. Click the notification bell so that you get notified when the video is uploaded. Thank you. And I'll have a good day. Oh, another one again is pride. There were a lot of pride in the novel. Because Ezeulu is, is full of pride. He does not want the people to, 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 look, to look down on him. And then most of the people look down on him. So it was also a kind of a pride comes before a fall. And even Waka was full of pride. Ezeidemili was full of pride. Because all of them want to get Ezeulu down so that they can take over. Alright? So, thank you. And uh, have a good day.